Hello everyone, my name is Diane Butcher and I am just entering my fourth year of PhD studies in the School of Nursing at the University of Victoria. And I originally presented this overview of Joanna Briggs Institute rapid reviews at our JBI committee meeting back in February of 2016. And so I just wanted to uh, do this voiceover so that I could post it onto my YouTube channel. So let's get started on reviewing JBI rapid reviews. First, I thought I would offer a bit of background of the larger JBI landscape for those who might not be familiar with this organization, so you could see how the rapid reviews are situated. JBI, or the Joanna Briggs Institute, began in Adelaide, Australia in 1996, and they really focus on being a global leader in evidence synthesis, transfer, utilization, and evaluation. And they promote healthcare being informed by not only best available international evidence, but also clinician expertise, patient preferences, as well as context. And JBI has developed a framework for using best available evidence to inform clinical decision making in order to improve health outcomes globally. And as well, they provide tools for the synthesis of various domains of evidence, for example, qualitative evidence, text opinion, prevalence, mixed methods, effects, prognosis, diagnosis, umbrella, and scoping reviews. And their target audience is really academics and healthcare professionals. To acknowledge the significance of evidence beyond assessing effectiveness, often related to trials, JBI created the acronym FAME to consider various types of evidence that can be synthesized. Feasibility is whether or not a particular activity or intervention is physically, culturally, or financially practical or possible within a particular context. Appropriateness is the extent to which an activity or intervention fits in a situation, how it relates to the context. Meaningfulness is the extent to which an activity or intervention is positively experienced. And this relates to personal experience, opinion, thoughts, beliefs, and interpretations of participants. So feasibility, appropriateness, and meaningfulness really begin to pull in a lot of qualitative research, which is important to consider and expand beyond what was traditionally seen as more quantitatively orientated evidence and synthesis relating to effectiveness. And of course, effectiveness is the extent to which an intervention achieves a desired effect relationships between interventions and outcomes. So for example, your RCTs and that type of, of uh, trial. So it's important to note that JBI does have certain assumptions which underpin its meta-aggregation or synthesis approach. JBI is explicitly aligned philosophically with pragmatism in that the focus of their approach to synthesis is to aggregate individual findings into categories and then into synthesized findings. And this is in order to create recommendations for practitioners and or policymakers. So the intent really is to make evidence useful for practitioners in various contexts. As well, JBI leaders align their processes within perspectives related to transcendental phenomenology which includes focusing on universal essences of meaning, ideals of truth, if you will, which supports the notion of synthesizing findings into statements to be utilized by practitioners. A particular position is also assumed of the reviewer within the JBI context, in that this perspective, according to JBI, avoids the influence of reviewer on the text, and thus preserves the meaning of the text within the primary research papers. So for example, within the uh, transcendental phenomenology approach, um, this is related to the bracketing. Bracketing of the pre-understandings of the reviewer. So the reviewer is putting aside what one already knows or has experienced related to the phenomenon so that they can see it without imposing past knowledge or experience upon the phenomenon. So really a sort of a more neutral stance, if you will, of the reviewer in the context of conducting a JBI review. And of course, this positioning does remain controversial. It's only one perspective of many. 
um, within philosophical perspectives, but it is important to consider that JBI does situate the reviews within this philosophical frame. JBI provides various online tools and resources in order to facilitate a review. These tools are embedded in a software program that is currently under the process of being upgraded with JBI. So in order to access the tools, one must download the necessary software that gives reviewers the access to various areas, depending on your role and the type of review. The summary software contains CREMS, which then links with various analytical modules. I have four modules listed here, Quarry, Notary, Mastery, Actuary. However, there are more and JBI continues to develop more as we speak. And in addition to these analytical modules, there are other resources including RAPID, which I am going to talk a little bit more about today. So what is JBI RAPID? JBI RAPID is the Rapid Assessment Protocol Internet Database which is an online training resource. It is designed to assist students and practitioners acquire skills in literature reviewing and critical appraisal. More specifically, a particular question can be developed using your PICO guidelines, literature can be found, and then rapid reviewers use the software to critically appraise a paper. This paper can then be submitted to JBI per, for peer review and then published as a rap sheet in the JBI library. So who is JBI Rapid designed for? JBI recommends that rapid reviews be utilized in teaching contexts and or journal clubs and JBI does have a platform for a journal club as well. So Rapid is really designed as a teaching and a learning tool for appraising literature and creating a summary of a single paper or you can also use it as a summary of a systematic review. So it is designed according to JBI to organize, conduct, and archive an evidence summary of a single study of an intervention or professional activity or of specific findings of a completed systematic review. So I think this wordle shows how the process of rapid reviewing could be seen in the context of helping to develop some critical literacy. So as a student, for example, I could develop a research question and go out into the literature and find a primary research study relating to my topic and then create a rap sheet. Now, I've outlined here what I do at my institution to gain access to the JBI site, but you'll have to check with your own individual institution if, in fact, you do have access to JBI resources, and if so, how you might, as a student or faculty member, access the information and the resources. So when you do have access and you log in successfully, this is the page in which you will come across and you enter your information here and then the wrap maker begins with having you enter study information on the next page. And from this page you see here, you can also access the rapid library to read other completed peer reviewed wrap sheets. So this is the page where you enter your PICO question or wrap question followed by your paper information. The final choice at the bottom the drop-down menu is choosing the study design and for example you can choose from a prognosis, risk, intervention, cost, experience, diagnosis or systematic review as possible choices of design. And making this choice will then prompt the software to choose the critical appraisal tool as well as the data extraction tool for each study during the next step of the wrap maker process as well as an added resource, the Rapid User Guide is also available online, which outlines the critical appraisal questions for each type of study. Here is the critical appraisal for an experience or qualitative study. This is the same tool that we use when critically appraising papers for the JBI systematic review. Ten questions are addressed and the Wrap Maker Manual, in addition to the JBI Reviewer's Manual for Systematic Reviews, does have explanatory paragraphs to assist with interpretation of each of these questions. After the 10 questions are addressed, 
the reviewer chooses at the bottom whether the overall quality of the paper is good quality, poor quality, or to be used with caution. And just a note that this remains a contentious issue, as there is a lot of controversy surrounding assessing quality within the qualitative realm. JBI's stance is that their quality appraisal focuses on rigor in terms of internal consistency among the elements, for example, between method, methodology, and the analysis, as well as the rigor in reporting. However, this does bring up further issues surrounding the influence of publication limits, peer review, and whether an omission in a paper relates or not relates to omission by primary researchers. So after this appraisal is complete, it is submitted and the next page appears in RapMaker. This next page, Data Extraction, prompts you to enter further information regarding the study, including the method, methodology, analysis, setting, geographical, cultural, intervention or phenomenon of interest, outcomes and participant information. Then the conclusions page is generated and the next slide is a screenshot of the conclusions page to give you an idea of what it looks like. An important note here on the extraction page is the heading of outcomes and outcomes is where all major findings of themes should be described. So here is the conclusions page and once this final step is completed entering not only the author conclusions but also the RAPA or your conclusions justifying if you mark the study of poor quality or to use with caution and that's where you can put in your comments and then submitting this will then create the RAP sheet and I do have a couple of examples of RAP sheets to show you one is a quantitative review and one is a qualitative review. Here is just a screenshot of the Rapid User Guide, which I mentioned earlier, that is available to you to use for a more detailed explanation of the critical appraisal questions as well as the overall process. So here is an example of an RCT quantitative rap sheet, and you can see the the various headings of information that is included, including the study design, participants, interventions, outcomes, dichotomous and continuous data. And then on the second page is the author's conclusions and then the rapper's conclusions. And it's important to note the qualifying statement by JBI at the bottom, that the views expressed in a rap sheet are the authors and not necessarily those of JBI, management or staff and they are not accepting responsibility for the accuracy of the opinions, information, errors, or omissions. So it's important to note that qualifying statement that's in the RAP sheets. And here is another example of a qualitative RAP sheet, Dying with Dementia, the views of family caregivers about quality of life. Again, you see the method, methodology, uh, highlighted, uh, analytic, steps uh, or overview as well, contextual information is included, participant, the phenomenon of interest, as well as the study outcomes, and again, author's conclusions and the RAPA's conclusions. And the same quali qualifying statement from JBI does apply here as well. So it is important to note the fine print on these RAP sheets and that uh, it is important to still have a critical eye when reviewing um, the sheets from the, the library. So how can these rapid reviews be utilized? It could be a great way to have undergraduate students begin to appraise papers in the context of stimulating dialogue and critique uh, related to their own clinical interests. They could submit and obtain feedback from JBI and have their rap sheets published. Graduate students could utilize the critical appraisal questions to critique literature and reviews in order to fuller, further develop their understandings around epistemology and research. JBI suggests that RAPID could be used for undergraduate students in that they could find relevant papers, primary studies, or systematic reviews and begin to critically appraise the papers. 
And as well, they do suggest that RAPID could help postgraduate students acquire skills in critical appraisal. And as well, I found that these reviews could be used to familiarize team members on critical appraisal prior to engaging in a full JBI review. For example, I've been engaged in four different systematic reviews. I'm a lead on my own for my dissertation work, and as well, I've been a team member on um, another quantitative review, a qualitative review, and a prevalence review. And I think looking at the critical appraisal questions, for example, and use, utilizing a RAP sheet really helps the team begin to discuss some of these questions and how you might interpret the appraisal questions in the context of your own review. So these RAP sheets can be used in a variety of ways as learning tools for a variety of students as well as faculty members. So this really concludes my review. Thank you so much for listening and I look forward to posting more on my YouTube channel regarding my presentations that I do as I, as I progress through my PhD studies. And as well, you can find me on Twitter at Diane Butcher. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on Facebook. And if you have any comments or feedback for me regarding this presentation, please also feel free to email me at dianeb at uvic.ca. Thanks so much for listening.